let's start. What is going to be about? <clears throat> so um, today we meet to talk about metrics, and uh, I was super happy to see uh, that the topic of uh, metrics, uh, I would say, attracted so many people, even from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Oh, that's that's a rewarding message. Um, okay, and and Slovakia as well. Um, but that's still the same time zone, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, folks, let's let's focus on the um, on the topic. So, I know that metrics are an interesting topic because we hear from many organizations that they say they are um, data driven organizations that they refer to um, validated learning. Other stuff that we hear uh, that you should usually. Um, um, include, I would say, using of some uh, some metrics. And uh, from my experience, uh, we aren't as good uh, with metrics as we think we are. And that's why I wanted to, to share with you some of uh, my own findings, but also a kind of um, curriculum that I'm familiar with about uh, what to measure and how to measure and um, what are, I would say, common traps uh, related to um, yeah, defining and, and tracking and maintaining uh, certain metrics. Um, so what we're gonna have today, first of all, if you have come here to uh, listen from me, a kind of a catalog with good, bad and actionable metrics, you can free up the spot right now. Yeah, <laughs> we are not gonna do it. So, but uh, but I hope you're still going to stay with us because I'm, I'm I'm not going to give you a litany of you know um, metrics that you could use. I would be super happy if you would actually um, come to own educated decision what kind of metrics to use. Maybe which metrics that you currently have in your organization drop. Um, or maybe add something to um, to the spectrum of the metrics that you track. And uh, I know that today today organizers aren't having easy evening with me because I, for example, uh, decided to give you a different uh, different survey to collect a certain metric um, on uh, yeah not only my performance, but also your happiness, which is customer happiness. I, I think that's what we also included in the description. So the first thing I will ask you to, I'm now pasting into the chat room um, a URL. This is a URL to uh, a, um, office forms. So um, I guess you know how, how it looks. Um, I'm gonna show you what you should see. So, um, you, you will probably see um, just, uh, um, yeah, let me know if it works. It's good to test it on your own, yeah. You should see something like this. So what is your purpose of attending this, this event, this meet, meetup? And I want you by now just type in your own personal purpose. Why are you here? Is it just spending time because you had no better thing to do in the evening? or you want to validate your own metrics against what I'm going to tell you, or maybe learn something else, um, it's, it's up to you. Uh, please bear with me. So don't scroll, like you, you can scroll down, but don't fill the other um, answers because uh, the, the questions and answers to following two questions will be the one uh, that you're supposed to do in, in the yeah, end of our, our meetup today. So yeah, that's, that's it for now. Of course, if you don't want to, that's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, this is this is optional. Um, okay, so let's let's start. First, uh, the agenda. So we're going to start with why, hmm, of course. Simon Sinek is not with us tonight, but we're going to start with why. Uh, we're going to talk about certain types of metrics, uh, also types of indicators. Um, we're going to go into area of uh, connecting networking uh, metrics uh, because usually one metric is not enough uh, we're going to talk about four different types of metrics including good and bad and actionable and some others maybe you're familiar with some of them maybe not and we hope to say we hope to save some time for q a so i'm a talkative person whoever knows me in person but well hopefully we're going to make it and surprise surprise because I don't think it's humane to keep people two hours straight in front of computers. I don't think it's also healthy to speak for two hours. 
So we're going to have a coffee replenishment <laughs> break in, in, in between. Yeah, we don't know when exactly. So as you can see, this is not, um, not defined. We'll see what's, uh, what's going on. Um, I will try to keep my attention on you and the presentation and some other um, surveys that we got surveys that we're going to do during it. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions or anything, it's like outstanding what you totally agree, disagree, drop a message to the chat. I will I will have my eye on it. So maybe we'll um, we'll address the question on the fly. OK, so starting with why. I would say the first thing to have healthy, good, and useful metrics is, is first of all, understanding what we want to accomplish by introducing or tracking a certain metric. And uh, we know that metrics are in the organizations for different reasons. I believe some of us probably have also our own metrics in our life, personal life or family life that we track, uh, sometimes unconsciously. But in our professional life, it's, it's usually more about some reports that we need to generate or maybe if you are a manager some report that you want to read yeah so it's it's not only something that you generate but maybe something that you consume uh, we know that weekly or monthly reports uh, aren't uh, exactly agile as such uh, so very often um, we also maintain different dashboards uh, showing some data in real life yeah so we would like to see how are uh, certain things um, going up or down uh, have uh, have nice visualizations and, and whatsoever. But I would say if you want to first un understand uh, why do we track something, it's good to ask yourself and maybe people around you in the organization following question. So first is like, when is it the last time that someone took a decision based on a given metric? Because if you cannot find such person or you cannot find such event in the timeline, then there's a high chance that you don't really use this metric and you don't really need this metric. Maybe you need a different one. Uh, but if, if metric is not actionable, that's probably the first definition of actionable uh, that we're going to hear tonight, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a risky bet to use such metric. Uh, the other questions that you could come with is like, first of all, who went and why introduced uh, something that we measure or introduced a given metric? Why? Well, I'm pretty sure that if you ever joined a, an existing organization, this organization already has a series of uh, or a network of metrics. And now question is like, why the heck do we track them? Yeah. And I'm um, again, not saying that it's all bad, that we, we have some metrics and they exist in the organizations for many months or years. But uh, I would say it's important to, to know uh, that we don't track, for example, metrics which were defined and introduced by people who no longer live uh, with us, meaning like we are in the company, right? And, and, and no one basically challenges or no one actually, um, I would say, uh, simply ask, why, why do we do it? Why do we still track something that's maybe not, uh, um, I would say, valid anymore? And uh, second, uh, and the third point is like, are the metrics that, for example, um, are local metrics for our team or our part of organization? This could be customer support, this could be marketing, but obviously software development, so delivery organization, how are they connected to other metrics? So are they completely disconnected? Do we even know if any other part of organization tracks any other metrics or not? Yeah. I'd say again, that's uh, that's quite um, quite interesting to know. And uh, first interactive part uh, for tonight uh, for you is is to basically reflect uh, on um, what do you do in your organization, and that's why I'll ask you now uh, to open a browser uh, so you can stop looking at me and type in sly.do and then um, type in the the number of the event. It's a w like. Agile Warsaw 226, that's the number of tonight's event, um, and, uh, and answer the question. I'm going to activate it in a moment, so bear with me. Um, this is, this is going to be a question about what do you track uh, currently in the organization? I'm not going to ask uh, about, uh, let's just say, uh, particular metrics, but types of metrics. So we would like to see what do you what do you track in terms of either qualitative metrics uh, do you track quantitative metrics 
do you track both or maybe you think your organization is like too agile for metrics so you can you can you know use fly blindly or on your gut feelings or <laughs> whatever i'm gonna those of you who who basically um share your um your data in this um uh, in this poll you will see the results i keep this keep them secret from you for now now knowing that people on youtube uh, see us uh, probably with a, a, a slight delay i will also wait for them so they would hear it and um let's see i will then disclose the results so far we have 35 36 people 40 voting okay of course there's hashtag no judgment so we don't, we don't judge one over the others right we we don't say that uh, one quantitative is definitely much better uh, like in obvious cases you know you, you know i hate velocity so <laughs> i'm not gonna elaborate on it okay i guess we have um, 42 people who voted 43 that's maybe it um okay so yeah, some more votes are coming. Okay, so here are the results. You can see that majority of you, 46 people voted, half of the population uh, which voted uh, basically currently in your team project or organization, we don't know the details, uh, track quantitatively so you have some numerical uh, metrics uh, but also um, a big portion uh, track both and and we have um, people who focus only on qual qualitative metrics but uh, you know my gut feeling was right that there are also people and organization who don't track uh, anything at all okay no no judgment like we said okay so let's go into details um which metrics are good or bad? Because I believe that's one of the reasons that some of you could come tonight. Um, and I would say before we decide which metric is good and which metric is bad, we should first talk about different types of metrics. And first type of metric that I would like to talk about are metrics that we call either lag metrics or lagging metrics. You may found uh, you, you may heard this this word this this term. Lagging metrics aren't bad, but they um, but they often I would say fall into this category. We're gonna uh, now discover why is it that sometimes lagging metrics and what kind of lagging metrics are bad. So um, here is this man. He says you cannot manage what you don't measure. Of course, uh, these days in um, in the agile world, we would say, thank you, Mr. Drucker, but uh, we say now you cannot improve what you don't measure. And um, lagging metrics are absolutely needed in the organization, uh, but it's dangerous if that's the only type of metrics that we have, uh, because uh, they can lead us, I would say, to very dangerous uh, plateau of uh, uh, being you know satisfied with how we perform <laughs> and and we may be um, blind to some other things which are going on so um, yeah lagging metrics metrics that uh, yeah what are lagging metrics in in real life yeah so i would say in realms of products and services and processes we we have a lot of these yeah one of the example is something like this, that every sprint, a scrum team tracks down the number of story points related to items completed. Anyone knows how, what's, what's the name of this uh, metric? I guess you do, yeah. Of course, it's velocity. Yeah? It's, a, it's a lagging metric because we don't know velocity before the, uh, the sprint ends. Yeah, we, we know uh, something about past uh, sprints, uh, during the sprint, we may have some indicators uh, what this velocity is going to be, uh, but again, it's something that it's uh, known when it, once it's done. The same for, I don't know, sales or acquisition metrics. So, uh, for example, how many, how many users did we acquire in uh, a period of time, like a month? Uh, it could go up, it could go down, it could go um, flat. Uh, so, yeah, again, something that we can measure. 
the same about uh, the time, time elapsed between the start uh, or a point in time that we consider as a start and the delivery uh, point. Uh, and of course, this is uh, known as lead time or cycle time, depending on um, the scale that you that you measure it in. Um, a metric like this, can you imagine what's, what's behind it? Um, people very often uh, need to or ask to click and say how likely you are to basically uh, recommend a product to a friend or a colleague. Uh, sometimes there's a similar metric about the workplace. So how likely you are to recommend the workplace to your colleague um, or a friend. Uh, and this is what we call net promoter score. So these are all lagging metrics because we cannot, uh, we may have some forecasts, we may have some projections, but it's known once it's done. Uh, in everyday li day life, we also have uh, lots of examples of lagging metrics. Um, for example, um, this man stands on the scale, on the bathroom scale. We're going to uh, see how much is his body uh, mass in a moment. Um, and uh, why lagging metrics or lagging metrics standing alone are dangerous uh, is that, of course, uh, we cannot influence uh, the value of it if we only learn after the fact. But of course, there is a chance that you, you, you know how to travel in time, like in the Netflix uh, uh, dark series. But unless you can travel uh, back in time, you cannot do anything about lagging metric once it's, uh, once it's done. So let's just say that this man uh, basically puts his body on the scale and he says, oh, 90 kilos, that's not what I'm happy uh, with. Um, I would like to have 76. Yeah? 76 would be satisfactory to him. Um, so um, what he could do uh, is that he could uh, try to uh, weight himself uh, every couple of hours. Uh, of course, I'm simplistic here because it wouldn't be precisely 90 kilos uh, at every uh, different hour. Um, but this is another mistake that we take with uh, lagging metrics. Um, sorry that this quote is in Polish. Po południu zważa się na na kilogram mniej. That's a phrase from a Polish song. Um, in English, you could translate it that, you know, I'm, I'm going to weight myself um, in the afternoon with a hope for one kilo less, right? And uh, of course, it doesn't help uh, because the fact that you're going to measure something with a higher, with, with a higher frequency, uh, by increasing the frequency or with a higher precision, uh, so I don't know how many digits that your, does, does your scale show. Um, it's, it's not going to change it. It's not going to probably give you what you're looking for. And two, I would say, uh, consequences that we see when organizations have only lagging metrics uh, is an email like this. I don't know if it's readable for you, so I'll read it uh, from the boss for your information. From now on, I want you to log um, your finished tasks every two hours. Yeah, because uh, if if I don't feel like I'm in control, then I will tell you to do something uh, more frequent, and I will hope that this will bring me some improvement. You may say, "Well, this happens in in not healthy organizations." Um, but surprise, surprise! Uh, some months ago, there was a lot of internet memes about the tool called Jira, because uh, in Jira, they introduce what? They introduce the decimal points to the uh, story points, right? So like if, if three story points is, is not enough precision, then we're gonna improve our delivery by, uh, by inputting like 3.28 um, of a story point, yeah? I don't know if, if you actually work in the organization when you track story points in such a way and it actually helped you, I'll be happy to hear out your story, seriously. Um, okay, what else? Um, of course, uh, it is important to understand that metrics can measure two things, outputs or outcomes. We're gonna talk about it in detail in a moment. Um, but if we subordinate our actions uh, to just losing uh, weight, uh, so moving from 90 to 76 kilos, um, of course, uh, there's a hypothesis behind it that 76 is better than 90, yeah? So I am now around 90, it's very personal. And I was like four years ago, 76, when I ran my first and only half marathon in my life. Um, and uh, you need to be very cautious with it because uh, following a single and especially output-focused lagging metric can be dangerous. Why? Well, 
way or another, you can reach your, uh, let's just say, expected body mass in this case, but you may be weaker, yeah? Or you may uh, lose your stamina. So you may be able to do some exercises, but not for a long time. Uh, or you may, you may even drive yourselves towards like a serious metabolic issues, right? Because uh, we don't know precisely what did you do to lose uh, 14 kilos, yeah? And, okay, but... I think you have come here to learn mostly about software development. So uh, you're not going to talk about, uh, you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to be satisfied with listening Radek talking about his dietary <laughs> restrictions. So how about software? Yeah? Um, so let's just say that many organizations want to deliver fast and a lot. Have you ever heard about organization like this? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so if you want to deliver fast, you probably introduce lead time or cycle time into your dictionary. And uh, with this in your mind, you say, let's deliver faster. So let's just say that now it takes something, I don't know, a new product, new version, release, whatever it means for you. Now it takes two months and we would be happy to do it uh, within 10 days. And let's imagine that you do it and you are capable of delivering something that before took two months and now it only takes 10 days. But what about your colleagues from customer support? Yeah, Do they hear the litany of uh, complaints, right? Uh, what happens to stability of your systems? Yeah, MTBF, anyone knows what does it stand for? Yeah, it's a very lean production, but also in, in maintenance or operations uh, known metric. Um, which is uh, mean time between failures, right? So like how often does your system break? Yeah? And, and uh, we may deliver faster, but we uh, may not enough time to, I don't know, maintain our systems or, or something like this. Uh, and of course, because every company lives only not for the uh, happiness of the developers, but for the money-making factor, um, how much does it cost or how much, it, how much does it make you earning more uh, if you deliver uh, more often, right? These things do not need to be, uh, I would say, positively correlated. Uh, it, it could be even um, vice versa. Um, so lagging metrics aren't bad as such, but we should we should be aware what what these what these metrics measure. So do they measure outcomes or only outputs? And I need to say that again, for Polish language, it's a challenge because uh, if you type in these terms into Google Translate or any dictionary, you're gonna find the same, um, uh, the same word in Polish uh, or yeah, um, it's not gonna be easy. I think we should start thinking about outputs as something what in Polish we call wynik, so something numerical mostly, um, and outcomes, um, something like results or result or, um, or, or whatever we can achieve, right? So in your power outlets, you have uh, 230 volts and what you can do with this 230 volts is, is totally different, right? You can, you can put your hair hairdressing machine and shave your head or you can turn the, the TV on, yeah? Like whatever you're gonna do with the electricity in the circuit, it's up to you. Um, and again, if we have lagging metrics in our organizations, or we think about introducing one, we should definitely think about, do they measure output or do they measure outcome? Output, as I said, usually new metric, very often a single value. Outcome is actually what happens in our system. What is the new ability? What is, uh, what, what, what's enabled? What wasn't possible before? What kind of feedback that uh, we receive now because of uh, doing something? And again, examples, uh, well, you could say in 90, in 85% of cases, uh, the lead time of delivering whatever you measure is like less than eight days. Um, but what actually matters is like, what do you deliver? So, um, and, and what are the um, customer expectations? So like if these eight days are actually something what's expected by customers and congratulations, because they probably stay with your product uh, or stay with your company, uh, if they have totally different expectations, then um, you may be, you may be in, in troubles, right? And uh, very often the team velocity uh, which is expected to be, I don't know, stable or high, like 40 story points per sprint. Uh, but of course, what actually matters is like, 
are the new features that we delivered with these 40 uh, story points are first of all delivered and recognized by the user, right? So, so they notice that, I don't know, there is a new feature or the application is, uh, I would say more, um, um, I don't know, fa faster or more stable or more secure or whatever, um, whatever you do. Um, okay, if lagging uh, metrics are dangerous, how to avoid this, uh, this danger? There is a different type of metrics, but they are actually indicators and we call them leading indicators. Leading indicators are something uh, that, uh, I guess you're gonna uh, recall the, uh, the example with, um, with the body mass. So if we say we still have the ambition of, of losing extra kilos and we say measuring our body mass every three or four hours doesn't really make sense and doesn't bring us closer, uh, what can we do? Well, and this is the leading indicator. So we have a hypothesis, we have a kind of assumption that by doing something or starting doing something or doing more of what we do now, uh, so the how much is also important factor here, um, we're gonna reach the expected level of the lagging metric. How to do it with the, body, with the body mass loss? Well, it's super simple. If we say we consume three pizzas weekly, and we see that pizza is not the healthiest thing for us, then we could say by reducing the number of, of pizzas uh, eaten weekly, um, this is it, yeah? I see Marcin is cooking something. I hope he's co cooking something healthy. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, the, the same with the how we spend our time, yeah? So uh, if you say uh, you, you see a problem that you, exam for example, eat pizza while watching TV series on Netflix, yeah, then maybe stop watching Netflix or put your, your road bike on a trainer in front of your TV screen and start exercising at the same time. Um, and of course, uh, this example, I would say, resonate quite well with uh, our everyday life, uh, but how, how, how to understand it in, in our domain? So it is good to pair up the leading indicators, which is one type of metric with the lagging metric, which is the other type of metric. For example, let's imagine that you have a new CTO or a new tech lead in your company. And he says, we should do the test driven for all the new test driven development for all new features, right? Well, test driven development may increase the code quality, but that's the output. And only by validating if the output is actually, yeah, fewer issues, yeah, maybe fewer calls to our customer center or uh, fewer, um, I don't know, bad uh, PR uh, on, on the media about our product and actually higher customer happiness, uh, that's good. And of course, we need to measure it somehow. So of course, we need to know, are we actually driving the, the test-driven development in our organization? Do we apply it instantly to all the features or maybe we just like select the, the 50% that are more, most critical, etc. cetera. Uh, once we say there is increased code quality, we should have a measurement how to do it. Maybe that's like the number when, when the features go back to in progress yeah? or when the code review fails. And, and finally, yeah, if you say NPS is the way that you track uh, your, your customer happiness, then, then of course they all should be somehow correlated. Uh, the same about limiting, yeah, I, will, I wanted not to use WIP here. So product backlog items in progress. Um, if you say we limit them, we focus, maybe we actually deliver everything what we subordinated to the sprint goal uh, and that's the output and we achieve the sprint goal and we have it confirmed uh, by our users. Uh, those of you who know me uh, could expect that I will inject some uh, nasty Kanban's idea like limiting work in progress. So yes, uh, you were right. Um, okay, easier said than done. Um, I would say it also matters to understand what are the, the reasons behind introducing certain uh, metrics. Sometimes there is a true reason for dissatisfaction. So either we inside the organization or our customers are unhappy with how we, how, uh, yeah, how our product or service is shaped. Sometimes it's ambitions, I would say healthy ambitions, right? Like we want to do better job. Uh, and we start with uh, the leading uh, indicator. So like, uh, let's start doing X or more of X. Uh, we see observable output 
which is a lagging metric, and we have the outcome, which is also a lagging metric. Now, um, it would be super easy to do it if we would uh, exist in like really isolated uh, <laughs> reality, but we don't. So usually it looks at least like this, right? So we have multiple metrics uh, because we have one leading indicator um, about uh, some activity. We believe that it's gonna input, uh, increase our output. Uh, we expect that it's gonna increase um, uh, the outcome. But of course, if we do it forever like this, we, we don't introduce any balancing uh, feedback loop uh, that would be dangerous. Uh, of course, after, after some time, we may come that the, the first leading indicator like per programming or whip limit or whatever doesn't help anymore. And then we need to come with another leading activity uh, and build another experiment around it. And don't be blind to what happens with the rest of organization. So uh, it's great that now we are able to deliver as much as we want, but what happens to our sales organization or what happens to our customer support, right? Uh, we, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, in, in, your prof, in your personal life, you were also, I would say, victims of a situation when there's like a, a huge discount for a service and, and everyone buys it. And then there's a bottleneck in the customer uh, service or um, uh, delivery. Uh, this is actually where system thinking kicks in, right? So uh, we need to think about the reality as an interconnected uh, network of, of different systems and, uh, and, and thinking only, I would say, in the uh, context of our um, organization, be it marketing or design or um, whatever else is, is, is probably not enough. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like to understand now what is the biggest problem in your organization in, I would say, introducing um, uh, metrics. Um, and uh, this is going to be the input for um, the other part of, um, um, of our conversation after the break. That's why I would kindly ask you to think about your organization. Um, what are the problems? What are the challenges? And again, I'm gonna refer you to the slide.do, the same number. Now you should see a different question. The question is like, what is, what is the biggest obstacle with using metrics in your team, project, or organization? Again, I'm gonna keep the results for myself. And now you can really type in the text, so give your own input. Um, I will share the results um, in a moment. So we'll see, this will be the input for the later part. Okay, I see, I guess the, yeah, I, I remembered about people um, on YouTube, so we're gonna wait for them. Um, I see some, some results, some input from you. So I'm also certain that the, um, the survey works as expected. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, the results aren't hidden, but but remember that there are people who maybe don't type in the results, and uh, and of course uh, you see it, I guess afterwards. But correct me. Um, so we want to, I would say, avoid some kind of bias that you know that we we see that someone typed it in, so you're not gonna type it in or or something like this. While this could be actually the most important uh, thing if uh, if we're going to find um, I would say different people typing the same the same stuff. Uh, I guess we have over thirty uh, answers by by now. So. I'm, I'm not gonna close it uh, like really in, in a second because maybe you will come to your own obstacle in a moment. Of course, I wanted to have your attention on the, um, on the um, um, survey or the question now uh, because I would like to uh, 
us all focus on the next, uh, next topics. Here are the examples. So time and different type of works and, and teams being pessimistic, of course. Uh, no, no link between metrics and, and job. Um, we don't use metrics because we don't know how. I hope it's, it's going to change after this evening. Uh, too many metrics at the same time. Absolutely. I, I think uh, not long time ago, I heard about metric hell. Uh, so we have so many metrics that we don't know um, what to use. Yeah, lots of lots of good, uh, good input from you. So thank you very much. Yeah, like I said, if you still have uh, something in your mind or some you will recall something that's that's absolutely fine to to edit. Um, okay, let's move forward because uh, there's still quite a lot uh, about metrics that we can uh, we can learn tonight. Um, so we said, well, it's not easy. Lagging metrics uh, are dangerous. Lagging metrics should be balanced with some uh, leading indicators. And uh, a single pair of uh, lagging metric and a leading indicator are, are not enough because our organization is usually a complex adaptive system, like uh, a, a part of a system like this uh, that now you see. So um, life's not easy. Well, but if it would be easy, we wouldn't have such a well-paid jobs, isn't it? Um, okay, so one more wisdom from the Jedi Master. These aren't the droids that you're looking for. Um, of course, I meant metrics, not droids. So what are the what are the bad metrics that we that we should avoid? Well, the bad metrics uh, can be recognized by a very simple, I would say, a litmus test. So we call these metrics vanity metrics. Vanity metrics, uh, that's something that we say is, uh, well, um, first of all, something that uh, is understood as the more the better. Yeah? The more the better, that means that if you have X, twice as many X or three times as many X would be better. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, there are values which uh, absolutely are justified to, to be expected to grow. Um, it could be higher, it could be faster, it could be cheaper, it could be more often, etc. Uh, but if there is no target value, then they become addictive and uh, they become, I would say, the value in themselves. And that's, that's very dangerous because what is the target velocity for a scrum team yeah? or what is not that i would be a critic of of scrum but what would be the shortest lead time yeah from my neighborhood so kanban kanban style like what's what's the shortest lead time yeah of course we could uh, we could we could shorten the lead time to i don't know how ridiculously short uh, periods but but so what yeah like where do we start where, where do we stop with it um, and vanity metrics are the metrics which usually make us feeling better, but they are also something what leads to, I would say, gaming the system. And again, uh, velocity, how frequent we release, uh, how much of the tests we, we automate, uh, or the NPS themselves are, are such vanity metrics because there is no goal, or we very often don't don't talk, don't speak, don't agree about the goal, the target value for, for such metrics. And this leads to another, I would say, lean uh, wisdom. It's like what you, you get what you measure for. And, and we know that unfortunately in many organizations, uh, we, we find people, managers, um, chasing uh, certain vanity metrics. We see bonuses being paid based on vanity metrics. Uh, we see unhealthy uh, competition between different business units, which are basically cannibalizing the markets uh, just because of the, the vanity metrics. So I would say it is really good if you <laughs> would look at the metrics that you have in your organization and not only like try to categorize them as lagging or leading or output or outcome, uh, oriented, but also decide which are actually vanity metrics. And there is a hope for you because there is certain things that you can do with the vanity metric. So you can basically try to convert a vanity metric into something different. So 
very often metrics are introduced to organizations because certain people want to know if we are healthy as the organization. For example, are we agile? Yeah. Are we lean? Do we do Kanban? Of course, it's not possible to answer uh, such question uh, in, in like one, one liner. Mm, there are tests which you can, like the COVID-19 test. I, I wish everyone you have it negative. Um, of course, it's, it's a single value which says you're good or you're bad with. Uh, but I would like to think of uh, metrics as a blood test results. Yeah? So if, if you go to, to, uh, um, to a laboratory and uh, they, they take this, this small volume of your blood, they usually give you the results um, and the results look like, like this uh, data sheet here, right? So it says like white, white uh, blood cells, yeah, WBC and hemoglobin and hematocrit. And um, we have our values written there, but how do we actually interpret if the value is correct or not? If the value is healthy or not, yeah? We have a range. We usually have a range which is written next to it. So let's just say, if we talk about uh, white uh, blood cells, it's 8.0. And if the normal range is between 3 point something and 10, 10 point something, we know it's okay. Do we want to have 10.5 of them? No, because actually if you go above it, it's quite dangerous, yeah? Do we want to go uh, below it? Yeah? No, of course not, because then your immune system would be endangered, right? So it is okay to be within the range. You don't need to chase forever and evaluate with it. The same with hemoglobin. Here on this result, we see that this is below the lower threshold. Yeah? So we say, oh, it's, it's actually dangerous. And uh, this one is on the edge. So it's absolutely okay. But if we are on the border um, of the lower threshold, maybe we should monitor it more often. Yeah? So now I'm actually not consistent with what I said before, because I said, if this is a lagging metric, we shouldn't uh, do it more often. <laughs> Well, maybe not every day, right? But in some cases it would say, I would like to measure this, what is in danger. Yeah. And these kind of metrics we call health indicators. Health indicators are easy to spot because they have no single good value, but rather a range that we now see as accepted. There's also asterisk here because there is a different normal range for a male and female. By the way, all the best to all the females on the International Women's Day. Uh, there are different ranges for child, for children, and for adults, right? Uh, there are different, uh, different ranges for elder people. And uh, I, I think there are also different ranges for different organizations, right? If we think about uh, professional organiz uh, organizations. What else about health indicators is that uh, these ranges may change due to either evolutionary or revolutionary changes. So evolutionary changes is something slow. So let's just say we maturize, we professionalize the way we work, we automate more, we, we do the per programming war, we, we have uh, increased, uh, I don't know, skill set distribution in the team. And this should influence our ranges. Uh, of course, there could be an acquisition by a company, there could be a new CTO, there could be another revolutionary change, and probably this would also be reflected in uh, what kind of ranges are expected, and I would say accepted by, by normal. Mm -hmm. uh, very often, health indicators are metric which were previously improvement drivers. Yeah? So we could say, we could put some kind of cap on the health indicators, uh, I'm sorry, on the vanity metrics, and maybe that would be um, uh, becoming uh, the, the upper threshold. We should identify this, the, the lower one, uh, but very often referring to leading indicators, we would uh, uh, refer to improvement drivers. So what are these improvement drivers? Well, um, improvement drivers, are often the leading indicators. 
That's what I said like 10, years, 10 seconds ago. Uh, we need to define a safe way of measuring it because if we don't, it could become a vanity metric. So we are like running in circles. Um, we should define where we are now. So we should know the value from which we start. And uh, we should also understand what is currently seen as the target. Again, the risk of uh, becoming a vanity metric. Okay, could we see it better? Yes, because also the speed of change is important. So let's imagine that we have any value like test coverage or number of sessions of per programming or whatever comes to your mind as a leading indicator. Uh, and we say, now it's at level of zero. We don't do it at all. We would like to see it happening in a quarter or half a year to let's just say 50% of them. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, the first dimension, which is the time. So how long do we think it should take us? Now, to what value do we want to increase? I said a moment ago, 50% because uh, that would be a significant improvement. And if, if it actually helps, we should see a result or uh, yeah, outcome of it in other metrics. Now, the important thing is that um, maybe 50% is absolutely enough. So we should see how the quality or, or whatever we wanted to see as the outcome improved uh, because very often we see, oh, now we need to do it for 100% of cases. No. Why? Uh, the cost, the speed, people's happiness, I mean, employees' happiness with 100% of per programming sessions could be go, going down, going south. And um, maybe that's not needed to satisfy our customers. So we would definitely have, after some time, and identified a health indicator. So we say, we don't wanna go maybe to zero. So it's, it's somewhere above zero, maybe I don't know, 10, 20%, wherever this dotted line is. Um, we see that 50% is enough because we have people who want to work on their own and that's absolutely okay to work alone. Um, and that's it. We, we see and we want to uh, understand what is the, I would say the outcome of, uh, of such change. Okay, um, what else? Um, I haven't used the magic abbreviation KPI, KPI, Key Performance Indicator. And unfortunately in our language, uh, lots of people uh, call lots of things <laughs> Key Performance Indicator. Um, before we dive into it, this is what's going to happen after the break, is that, okay, what is actually this actionable metric, right? Because I already used this, this uh, definition once tonight. Um, that's, I said, that's a metric that based on which you can do a certain decision. Uh, and I would like to extend now this, uh, this definition. So what are actionable metrics? Well, actionable metrics are metrics which allow us to act before they will become a dissatisfactorily, dissatisfactorily lagging metrics yeah? before. Because again, if we have the lead time or if we have the velocity, if we have the customer satisfaction, it's too late. Yeah? One customer hated our product and he's now bashing on Facebook how crappy our product is. Yeah? And we cannot do much about it. So how we could prevent it from happening? Well, uh, I will stick to more tangible <laughs> cases like lead time. So if lead time is dissatisfactory, so we say we deliver really slow, uh, once we measure something when it's done, again, there's not much we can do about it. Yeah, It started in the past, it's delivered now, or maybe also in the past. So we, we have no influence on, on the length of this arrow. But uh, if we say that we hear from the customer that 12 days is, is not enough, it is, is definitely too much, I'm sorry, then uh, what can we do? We can measure something like this. Any idea what is on the graph? Maybe any of you have seen something like this? Cumulative flow. Oh, but close. Yeah. 
it's these are different steps in the process like review and test it's and in progress and, well it's not a kanban board it's a work in progress age diagram so it shows how old is our work since the moment it's been started until now but these are still not finished items yeah so I, I i know it may be like uh, going too too deep into it but let's just say if we don't care about ready for deploy because on purpose we accumulate items to be deployed in one batch of course maybe that's that's wrong i'm not saying it's good our interest is something that it's in tests and it already increased the 85th percentile 85 percent of expected lead time yeah this is already very old. And if we're not going to do anything, it will become only older. Yeah. So there's no point in like speeding up things which are like relatively young, but there's definitely a big power in speeding up things which are old. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, we should be careful with it uh, because I've seen organizations where um, if there's a pull request and there's expected uh, code review, uh, then someone is uh, running in circles around like review my code, review my code, review my pull request. Yeah. Uh, but there should be in every organization some explicit policy, some acceptable value. How long is it okay to wait for code review? Yeah. Because we may lead to a situation when, like, if a senior developer or whoever has a pull request, then everyone drops whatever they do and do they do code review. Yeah. This could be very disrupting. This could be uh, generating a lot of context switching. And, and uh, of course, that's not the way we want to go. Yeah? But uh, again, we should, uh, we should support, I would say, good, uh, um, yeah, good policy. Um, with, with a good policy, how do we, do, how do we deal with, um, with uh, work waiting? Yeah? OK. Um, so that's an example of, uh, I would say, actionable uh, metric. Uh, so something that we track, we track continuously. This is an example of a metric that we should definitely track uh, very frequently or update very frequently. Um, because, um, I don't know, if our work takes days, uh, then every single day is actually count, right? So, so we cannot wait. We cannot measure work in progress age every two weeks yeah? because again it's it's uh, it's too late yeah so we see that also the frequency of uh, how uh, often we update or measure a certain metric is related to yeah do we expect it to be actionable or not okay um another example is net promoter score um so um this is interesting for example i could ask you by the end of this presentation how likely are you to recommend this presentation to your product owner yeah because we're going to talk about products as, as well i imagine i i know some of you <laughs> i recognize the names or the pictures so i know that we have a lot of scrum master and agile coaches here and how about recommending, hey, Maciej, uh, how to recommend it to your product owner, yeah? And let's say that by the end of the presentation, you will vote. And some of you, I know Maciej waved at me, so he's going to give me nine. But I don't know, for example, iPhone Wojtek, <laughs> that's the name I see. Maybe he doesn't like my style, so he's, he's going to give me four, yeah? And now I'm, I'm in a limbo, because was I good or was I bad? Yeah, is, is it going to be uh, recommended or not? Uh, and net promoter score as such is not really actionable because, well, what can I do about the people who are going to give me four or even one? Yeah. Uh, of course, I could find myself in a situation when a lot of votes will be given at the green, uh, green end of the, of the scale. And I could come tonight, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to talk to my wife. You know, I'm a great speaker. They loved it. Yeah. Seriously? What about people who already left because I'm a boring guy? Yeah. <laughs> Are they going to vote at all? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. So, so it could be a very, very misleading vanity metric, right? Um, so... Yeah, who who are we? Who, who are the people who actually spend the time and effort on giving us the feedback? Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, yeah was it good was it bad uh, it doesn't come uh, i would say easy to to decide based on the metrics which aren't actionable yeah so like we said whip age very actionable of course it's a process related metric nps more product or service related or product and service focused metric uh, but not so actionable at all and um, can we do something about it well the usual answer it depends comes into play uh, but it's an hour since i uh, yeah uh, got your attention so i would like to ask now for a short uh break so if you still have any obstacle on your way to introduce or deal with metrics uh, put it in there uh, and if not uh, let's have a break we summed up that some metrics aren't as actionable as as the others and uh, i will give you uh, the example of for example Example, for example, I, I'll give you the example what to do with some of the uh, non-actionable metrics like, like NPS. There's nothing wrong about them, like I said, but it's very dangerous if this is the only metric that we have and we don't track anything, um, anything else. I will also be honest that it's, it's uh, hard to, it's, it's much harder to, to track some of them uh but uh, well again like i said before if our our jobs would be easy they would be probably automated by now um there would be a, <laughs> a, i don't know a bot instead of a, a, a scrum master um but you know also lots of managerial positions would be automated <laughs> if that would be easy so I guess it's in everyone's interest to, to have uh, the right metrics at hand. Um, okay, so um, if, if we have non-actionable metrics, then what? Well, we said NPS, uh, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, I know that there, there are different formulas in different organizations, how to measure it. Uh, if we would have 100 participants and 80 of them would give like nine or 10, that we see as promoters and 10 of them would give uh, something uh, ranging from one to seven. So detractors, uh, we would calculate uh, that we are like at 70%, yeah? which is uh, probably not satisfactory for many organizations. Um, we know it's a lagging metric. We know it's, it's, it's outcome measurement. Uh, so it's good, right? Because it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that our uh, customers, let's just say experienced, Right, uh, so so it's not like oh I'm gonna give ten because I know that they work like forty five story points per sprint. Yeah, like no customers, uh, no customer um, said it ever. Um, it's a health indicator because again we could introduce the ranges which are okay for us uh, at the moment, uh, but there is a risk that it's potentially a, a vanity metric. I said it's not actionable, but I leave it up to your judgment if you agree with it or not. So what is the alternative? Alternative is called fit for purpose card. And uh, actually this, uh, this first form, this first survey that I gave you tonight uh, on stating your purpose, that's the, that, that's the first question in fit for purpose card, uh, because there is no product which would be equally satisfactory for every single user, right? So like if you buy, let's just say, now we don't, but if we buy a cheap airplane ticket, um, uh, cheap cheap airlines ticket, we we know what to expect, yeah. And and if your purpose is to travel uh, cheaply, then you're probably satisfied with never-ending uh, promotions uh, on Ryanair or or EasyJet uh, board, right? But if your purpose is to travel uh, comfortably, then probably you, you won't be satisfactory with Ryanair service, but there's nothing wrong with the Ryanair service because it's segmented, <laughs> it's, it's, it's created for a certain segment of, of customers. Um, and uh, once we know what is the purpose, uh, for example, of each and sing single you being here tonight, uh, then we can say, was it extremely 
uh, and fit for you, like exceeded your expectations, what it highly, mostly, partially, slightly, or not at all. And again, very similar to, to NPS, we say that two top ratings are the one that we would like to opt for. Uh, maybe there are two neutral one in between uh, and two, um, two at the bottom, which are absolutely not, not satisfactory. Uh, and, and yeah, we can take some lesson from it. So the third part of the fit for purpose uh, survey is like, why have you chosen such value? Right, so like, um, we could say, of course, that uh, if you are, um, I don't know, uh, if you really care about, I don't know, I don't want to say quality, but like experience of eating, if you buy a hamburger at McDonald's, you may be not satisfied at all. Uh, but at the same time, you could be uh, devastated with children screaming parent and you would kill for stopping at McDonald's at all, at all costs and, and, and still it's going to be a great experience. Um, so we, we need to distinguish that uh, sometimes we're going to get uh, the reddish, um, let's just say, um, rating for our service or our product, but maybe there's, that's, not, that's not bad. Maybe that's, that's not our our, uh, let's just say, uh, target uh, customer. So how would the result of the Fit for Purpose card look like? If 80% of people um, if, uh, would, would give uh, like, you know, the, the green one and 10 yellow and 10, 10, um, uh, 10 red, there's, there's nothing wrong about these 10 because we would also collect their purposes. So what were the reasons? And let's imagine that we have seven different uh, purposes. Now we can act on these purposes, yeah? I use, for example, fit for purpose card in my professional trainings, right? So like so, as some of you know, I, I train with, with Kanban method and I actually ask people why they have come to my class and how was it for them and why they gave me the, mm, the, <laughs> the, the rating. And um, if, if they're gonna say it was satisfactory, but I'm here for the certificate only, maybe I didn't care more. <laughs> uh, but if they are dissatisfied because uh, for example, it wasn't magic their expectations but I, they are more experienced than, than I thought or they even thought before, uh, maybe the bad rating for me is actually a good rating for them because they didn't know how professional they are or how advanced is their knowledge in, in the field that I offer training set. Yeah? Uh, so fit for purpose card is also a, a lagging metric. It is also outcome measurement and it's also a health indicator, uh, but for different segments. Yeah. So we say there is no one single, um, one single, uh, value, um, let's just say, uh, that's, uh, that's or, or service that's going to serve everyone equally. Um, and uh, it is a little bit less likely, I'm not going to say it, it's, it, it cannot be a vanity metrics, but it's like a little less likely because we may understand that if we know, if we discover the purposes of our customers, um, we may not meet all of them if they are different. So I leave it up to you to decide if it's actionable or not. Yeah, I put it this way. Uh, I want to say that it's not in my invention. It's a part of a framework which is called Fit for Purpose. Uh, there are two authors of it. One is David J. Anderson. The other is Alexei Zheglov. That's also a part of the Kanban University curriculum, but I'm going to talk about it later. Okay. But uh, it's already late, late hour, and you would probably like to uh, learn what deserves to be called um, key performance indicators. So like I said before the break, let's be fair, let's be honest. We, but also uh, managers, also very often customers call different things too many, too often, mostly wrong metrics as, as KPIs. Yeah? And uh, in this spirit of, of using good metrics, actionable metrics, we would say, instead of key performance indicator, try to identify something what we call a fitness criteria. And fitness criteria could be applied to many different things. The product as such, uh, but also uh, process metrics. Yeah? So we say, 
if the same product won't be equally fit for different customer segments, there is uh, some kind of threshold when no matter how much we try, we are not going to satisfy the customer because, for example, he or she has unrealistic expectation about short lead time or unrealistic expectation about the price. Yeah? Like we would need to dump the price. We would need to go in red below, below uh, our earnings, right? And, and we cannot do it forever. Uh, we could have something what is fit for purpose, meaning that it actually meets the expectation of, of our customer. But again, I would say dangerously in IT work, we are also trying to overserve. So we are trying to deliver something what is not recognized by the customer. Yeah. Again, what is the difference between the product product satisfaction for the customer? Uh, customer satisfaction with a product, sorry, um, if we have 70 or 80 or 90% of automated test coverage, yeah, or 70 or 80 uh, or 90% of sprint predictability, yeah, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense to chase such vanity metrics in this case, uh, because our customer would be equally satisfied if we are here or here. But our cost for the, I would say, economy and people <laughs> burnout and whatever is, is much higher here in red than here in, in green. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is, again, a part of something what is called customer experience professional. Um, so that's, uh, that's something what is a part of uh, the curriculum of um, Kanban University. Um, you may find some trainings about that uh, soon coming to Poland. But I would like to open up a discussion now. So now I would like to spend uh, the extra time talking to you about what actually uh, matters to you. And that's why I invite you to basically um, drop on the um, Slido one more time. I have typed in there uh, four most popular uh, reasons uh, behind which you challenge uh, with introducing or using metrics. Um, I will show it now because uh, now we're gonna do the, 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 the ranking vote. So a couple of you said there is a fear mostly of people, but also organizations about uh, why, why we use um, uh, metrics at all. Uh, there is also a problem that some of you reflected that you have only outputs um, related uh, uh, metrics or outputs measuring uh, from output focused metrics, uh, that there are too many of them. So maybe you are uh, on the edge of this, uh, I would say, metric hell, uh, and also the expectations of the management. Yeah. So again, having in mind that there might be people um, on um, YouTube who have uh, this delay, um, what, what goes next is like, now please vote. I will then freeze the votes and uh, I would like to open up uh, four short slots. Um, so if you are uh, the author or co-author of uh, one of these reasons, I'll be happy to hear you out. Maybe you could give us some context. Why is it like this? And I'll be happy to basically just uh, talk briefly about what can be done. So it's even more actionable for you that you're going to leave with uh, some, um, some action for you. Maybe not only from me, but also from, other, uh, from others who are here. Um, so feel free to, to participate in it. Yeah, there's a, there's a comment that if you decide to speak, please turn your camera on. Uh, I can only uh, add plus one. I'll be happy to see, of course, if it's only technically possible, um, those of you uh, who will like to speak. Okay. Um, 23 people voted. Um, it seems we have a, a winner, maybe not a clear winner, 24 and counting. So. If you're still um, making up your mind, please, uh, please do, do it now. 
I don't don't close it, uh, so you can still vote. Uh, but I guess it looks uh, looks stable now. Um, okay, twenty six, but it that it didn't change uh, the the order. Okay, so I'm I'm deactivating the poll in like three, oh, two, one final call, like at the airport. Uh, whoever is not at the gate, you will need to wait until next time. Um, so I, I close the poll and then we have the results. Um, okay, um, yeah, there's additional question. Um, okay, so the, the first one was about, um, yeah, management expecting numeric uh, or, or output metrics only. Anyone willing to add anything to like, you know, context wise, why is it like this? Have you tried anything else? Um, Maybe I can risk a statement that whatever is numeric can be easily compared to something else. And our oh, managers yeah. love comparing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. That's just a guess. Okay, anyone seeing that in action that, you know, you can compare it period to period, team to team, right? Such things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would add one more thing that the management is... Uh, keen to see those vanities because they love them and anything which they don't understand because it doesn't really show you that you progress even if you don't they tend to put it back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay if i can have, have a question actually mm -hmm. a little bit of an answer where are these numbers normally coming from? Are you involved in uh, you know, finding them out or they are given to you and just, you know, to shepherd? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think we have a couple of statements here. Of course, um, there was another topic uh, listed uh, between the reasons that you you said are um, you know obstacles. Is what the measure what the management is measured for, right? So so of course we 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 don't know what is the motivation for people to go beyond out uh, output or numerical. Um, metrics only, uh, but I would say uh, from my experience, I'm not going to lie like 100% successful. It's like, first of all, start discussion about the existence of different types of metrics. Yeah. So like, uh, I, I always like come with, you know, open, open-handed to management saying like, um, we know that sometimes people who become managers, they were engineers before, they were promoted into being managers. There's maybe not always a bad intention or bad will uh, in how they act. Um, it's, it's, it's just go, good to open up the discussion uh, about like, you know, what are, what are other things that we could measure um, process with or product with or customer happiness with, right? And uh, I would also try to find maybe out, outcome focused metrics, uh, which are somehow connected to uh, whatever the managers are, for example, rewarded for, right? So I can only imagine that uh, no matter how big is the personal bonus, uh, no person, no human being like to be in the spotlight because his team or his part of organization or her department doesn't deliver, yeah? And uh, if we say, instead of just output uh, metrics, we could introduce some leading indicators and these leading indicators is something that maybe we'll keep only in our playground, but it's gonna help us to, um, to I don't know, deliver more or deliver more predictably or whatever, again, is, is the motivation for the management. That could be the opener for a discussion that uh, maybe initially will have a different type of metric, uh, either the leading indicator or um, not only yeah, 
a, a mix of quantitative and qualitative uh, uh, metrics, uh, and we'll use it for your imp for improvement of how you our your organization is basically perceived there. I think there's also a myth about like how how complicated or how big effort is be behind uh, uh, I would say collecting uh, non numerical um, uh, metrics or even numerical leading indicators and uh, that's not always true I would say yeah if if you again measure for the right thing uh, sometimes uh, you know the number of of you know, probing is like, you know, whatever you can um, measure with, with your, uh, you know, fingers. Yeah. Okay, anyone having any other um, remarks about that? Okay, so I guess another topic was related to fear. So why people are afraid of metrics? Anyone met anyone fearing uh, being measured? Yep, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. So what was the context? The context was that uh, kind of a set of basic metrics were introduced mm -hmm. company-wise um yeah as as uh, most of the teams were introduced into why we just did it the why we just measure mm -hmm. those let's say ah, velocity spring growth mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so on so all, all of those uh, all of those not saying anything about the value itself but let's say that's about about the performance and while let's say new teams were introduced into those metrics and they were let's say taken straight out of let's say more autonomous environment mm -hmm. they were very afraid of those metrics mm -hmm. because suddenly they felt like somebody started looking at their hands mm -hmm. okay yeah i've seen it Anyone else having other um, experiences? I had the, the experience uh, with quite bad impact, bad impact on this, this kind of performance indicators to the team. So when we start to measure and show uh, transparently that the, 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 the process time, so the, the, the time, uh, how long it takes uh, to, to accomplish some, some task, similar task, uh, between colleagues, so between mm -hmm. two team members, mm -hmm. um, I think it, it had a yeah, bad impact on, on, the, on, the, on the mood, like they, they start kind of competition, but uh, maybe it was healthy, but, uh, but, but, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, they start to feel like, Bad when you show that some some someone is better and someone is, is worse. So the individ mm -hmm. individual uh, metrics um, as a I think unhealthy example. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I see one comment of person who's like uh, dropping the call. If if you're gonna drop, please uh, have the um, yeah answer the, the other questions um, in the fit for purpose. Uh, so maybe I like repeat the. Uh, the URL here. So now it's the high time to, to give, I would say, uh, the rating. Uh, so um, give the rating and also the justification for rating. But Leon, I'm with you. And I guess as your child that we could hear from the back. Um, yeah, these, these are all good things uh, that you that you mentioned. I would say if we, if we decide to introduce any metrics, we should be really very, very cautious with like, which kind of metrics can be connected to a, to a personal measurement? And I'll, I'll, I'll start with like a fail that I did this week. Yeah, I, you know, let's, let's talk about only successes, but fails as well. 
So I introduced one team to measuring lead time and lead time in a form of histo histogram. So like showing how different is the distribution of the lead times of the tasks that they produce. And I used a tool which has no, which makes no use of it. But unfortunately, one of the team members saw that on the right hand side, there is a menu where I can expand and see people's names. Yeah, a total fail, I admit. Yeah. And I had to take multiple steps back and explain that, you know, there is no way that we could measure anyone's personal performance with it and with this tool and with this view, because what we understand as lead time is a sum of multiple people working on it. Yeah, so there's basically lead time is a sum of development time and waiting time and code review done by a different developer and then tester and then waiting for deployment. And in case of this client, also waiting for external platform guys to reply, etc. Yeah, so I'd say like whenever you think of introducing any metric, always be cautious about is there any aspect of it that, that people can you know, connect to themselves and, and feel like, oh, this is gonna be a tool of oppression, right? And, and now I'm gonna be measured with it, yeah? And uh, that's why I so like very much, uh, I would say the, the flow metrics and, and, and metrics which are connected to the flow of work items, not personal performance, yeah? But, yeah, I I agree. Like I admit also to my failure here this week. Um, yeah, so sometimes in in organizations where people are, uh, you know, there's a certain we're not going to judge. There's certain organizational culture and maturity. People will behave this way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what else we have? Uh, let me let me see. Uh, we had that we have too many of them. Yeah, so anyone being in the metric hell, like you cannot decide which one to chase because you have so many of them. Nope, honestly not. No, okay. So maybe those people who had too many of them uh, basically uh, already dropped the call. So I, I can give you the very simple exercise to do. Um, and I'm going to refer to one of the first slides that I show you tonight. Take a piece of paper, write down all the metrics that you have there, categorize them by ligging or la lagging. If lagging, then outcome or output and connect and, and try to describe them. When is the last time that you or anyone in the organization uh, yeah, took a decision based on this metric. And if you cannot answer the last point, you know what to do. Yeah, just, 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 just remove it. Yeah, I know that in some organizations, some people uh, in a stealth mode removed some of the metrics of on, of of the reports. And you know what? And you know what? No one noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I know that in some workplaces, uh, some people may not feel safe enough to do it. So I, I don't take, uh, I don't encourage you to do it. And I don't take uh, accountability if anyone's gonna be fired because of <laughs> acting this way. I'm just saying that I've heard about such things, even in the investment banks, but okay. Um, yeah, uh, okay. What else we had? Uh, we had that we have output only. That was the fourth topic, yeah? So. All I can say, we all, and I know that you know some of you are people who are really change agents in your organization. You educate your um, your product owners or, or whoever you work with, your your business owners, your stakeholders. We are the people who can open up people uh, minds and 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 eyes to not only output uh, metrics. And again, okay. How about we start measuring this or that? Yeah, and uh, it's it's not gonna be trivial always, but uh, yeah, I would say closing the evening with like a good uh, motivational speech. I can only say, <laughs> uh, please uh, please try. Okay, um, what else? I think these were the four topics which were the top topics here. Um, so 
From my side, I can only do the promo part. Uh, so if you're interested in more Kanban and other topics like this, uh, maybe you already know Kanban Przykawie. That's my Polish language podcast about it. There is a, a sub-series, subset of episodes about metrics coming. Uh, so now it's the time to listen to all 28 episodes recorded so far. So you're ready for the one about metrics. If you're interested wider in the fit for purpose, just look about it because uh, I, this is a new thing that we bring to Poland. So um, these trainings are going to be now uh, available also locally. Um, yeah, and uh, the best way to reach me out if you have any feedback that uh, you don't want to share now is uh, just write me. Some people say that I don't sleep uh, because uh, the response time on LinkedIn at all time of days and night is short. That's true. I mean, the response time is short. It's not that I don't sleep. Um, yeah. So I guess a little bit ahead of time, but come on, we would all like to see that we deliver ahead of time in our project. So I hope that our uh, amazing guests from Agile Warsaw don't uh, mind that we, we finished a little bit earlier.